All right, you're listening to Radio Western 94.9. I'm Preetha, and today joined with me is Janice Solf. Janice, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Uh, so we've heard a lot about your documentary, Into the Light. So can you give us a brief idea of what the documentary is exactly about? The documentary goes behind the scenes on the world's biggest projection installation, which is in old Montreal. And it's a series of 26 projections. It changes all the time because they're developing new ones and some have been under uh, um, or are in production because of technical difficulties, but it's around the 26 mark. And they take historical characters and historical events and they reimagine them um, and uh, dramatize them mm -hmm. behind the scenes, shooting them cinematically and then projecting them on the walls, the crumbling 300 year old walls in old Montreal. And um, they use 30K laser projectors, these sophisticated projectors that they built especially for mm -hmm. the project in Montreal. Right. They're the state of the world projectors. So what it is, it's the confluence of the old and the new, essentially. It's mm -hmm. the crumbling walls with the, the uber technology um, rebooting characters from three, 400 years ago and, and telling them in a current story. And all those things make, make for an engaging artistic project. Right, right. Um... Also, what drew you to make a film on the subject? Well, I, for 25 years, I covered the arts for CTV London. And I interviewed hundreds of artists from dancers to um, playwrights, directors, famous Hollywood actors, not so famous actors, um, <laughs> artists of all kinds, chefs, fashion designers. So for 25 years, five nights a week, I probed and I asked questions of artists. And um, I learned that by getting an artist to take, to let them take you inside their world, that you would discover magic that, that you could share with an audience. Because people love to get behind the curtain. They love to get the inside story and find out how the magic works. Right. And when you tell them about it, they love it. And um, so I was always attracted by the story, particularly stories that had something to do with artists. So when I, when I left my job, mm -hmm. um, CTV, to pursue a master's degree in digital media and marketing, um, while I was in the program at the University of Waterloo, I, I had an idea for a documentary. Mm -hmm. That led me to Montreal for my first documentary, Revealing Maurice Saint-Pierre about a very famous Canadian fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another. I, I did a short film on Michael Buble, the musician, the performer. And from there, I did a film on the murals of Montreal, these beautiful um, painted murals. And so I was already doing a film, a short film on murals mm -hmm. when I found out about the projections, which are a kind of mural, right? They're a digital right. projection of a mural. And um, um, I found out about them and I went to see them in old Montreal and I was blown away. I, I, I'd never seen anything like it because some of them were 20 stories high. Some of them, you know, I'd walk down a old cobblestone street and I would turn a corner and all of a sudden, the stone wall that was dark would just erupt into this gorgeous projection and the characters were staring right at me and right. um, it engaged me in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, so just as a follow-up, uh, what was the research like behind making this film and how long did it take for you to make it? <laughs> well, after I saw it, I my mural film, was at an art film festival in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And um, Michel Amiel, the co-creator of the projections, um, excuse me, I just want to cough. <coughs> Water going down the wrong way. Sorry about that. Um, That's all right. Um, Michel Amiel, he was giving a presentation at the same festival where my mural film was being screened. So mm -hmm. I reached out to him and we had a coffee. And, and I said, look, you know, I saw your projections. They were 
fabulous. And I'm from Ontario and, you know, I'm not as used to all this great public art that we don't mm. see in the rest of Canada to the same extent. And I said, I really think it would make a great documentary because after 25 years of telling stories, I knew that the audience would connect with this idea. I knew right. there was an audience for it. And he liked the idea. Nobody had approached him about doing a documentary, which really surprised me. So for the next year, I, I wrote about it. I, I, I tried to do a one pager on it. I pitched it at various festivals. I got a lot of rejections, mm -hmm. a lot of rejections. And this is part of the problem being a documentary filmmaker. You get so many re rejections that you lose faith, you know, in, in the idea. And, but I never gave up. And um, about a year and a half after I met with Michel Lemieux, I gave it one final shot. I went to this big film festival in Montreal called RADM. Mm -hmm. And I pitched the idea. And, um, and, and I did it with like, it's now or never. And I did this speed dating thing for f f filmmakers called Fosse en Fosse. Whoa. And, where every 10 minutes you pitch to a new broadcaster from around the world. Mm -hmm. And I landed in front of CBC Montreal and they liked the project a lot. And they only licensed two per year, which is not very many. And within a couple of days, they got back to me and confirmed. And um, once you get that, that broadcast license, it allows you to go to the Rogers Documentary Fund and the Canadian Media Fund and right. other funders to get funding. And that's how you put the financing together for a film. I also got a great producer named Sylvie Van Brabant who had done 35 documentary films in Quebec. And um, that was a year and a half ago. So it, it really took all that time to do the interviews, to do the scheduling, to put the financing together, to put the team together and mm. um, you know, figure out the intricacies of, of shooting a big project like that, like this, um, Into the Light with Cité Memoir, because we also had thousands and thousands of archival files to go through and license, and um, to go through each of these files and um, figure out what we were going to use in the film. And because they had shot hundreds of hours of behind the scenes uh, on the making of the Cité Memoir project, which was five years before I came on the scene. So that took a long time. And mm -hmm. um, then COVID hit. So we, we shot a, a few of the days in, in the fall. Uh, that would have been a year ago. And, um, and then we shot again in February, just before COVID hit of wow. 2020. And then all of a sudden the pandemic, it shut down everything. And we still had days uh, to go. And we had scheduled a, uh, our wonderful editor, Annie LeClaire, for April. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she's very tough to get. And, um, and I, I can't imagine anybody else editing this project because it takes a special kind of arts editor to, to do uh, an in-depth project like this with music, poetry, drama, cinema, projections. Right. Um, and so we went ahead and started editing. And what we ended up doing is we left holes for the parts that were missing. And then when the pandemic free, freed things up a little and Montreal was allowed to open for a couple of days in June, we went and, and shot on the streets in, in old Montreal and we shot the, the COVID flame, homage to our humanity, which is uh, honoring victims of COVID. Mm -hmm. and the faces that are on the stone walls. And, and we shot people on the street watching the projections. We didn't have any of that until just a few months ago. And it's very odd to do it backwards like that, but we didn't have a choice. And you know, when you're doing a film, you do, you do what you can when you can. And right, sometimes right. you just have to do it backwards. And uh, in the end, it worked. And uh, we were allowed, to, you know, we crammed, probably five days of shooting into two days. Oh my and God. Then, yeah, and then we finished editing in uh, July. Uh, we did post-production July and August. And, um, uh, and then we sold the French version of the film to Ilico, which is Quebec Horror in September. And 
and then we finished editing that in September. My my producer directed that on the street in in September and uh, with the same participants, and then that will air at the end of November in Quebec. So it's it's ongoing, you know. It never yeah. things never go according to schedule. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, another thing I uh, I wanted to ask you is. Uh, how, we, we know that you have a really impressive filmography. Uh, you just mentioned, uh, reveal, uh, reveal, um, you just mentioned a short film on Michael Bublé. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have revealing, uh, revealing, uh, Marie Saint Pierre. Uh, Marie Saint Pierre. Um, so how is this feature different from your previous features so far? Good question. I, I think you grow, first of all, as a filmmaker, you know, you get into a rhythm. Filmmaking is about a rhythm. Right. And it's about feeling the story and the rhythm of the music mixed with the images, mixed with the dialogue. And I, I think this film found its own rhythm. And um, uh, I think it's a little riskier. And um, because you change as a filmmaker and you ask mm -hmm. more questions in your film as a filmmaker. Um, I think visually it's it's quite stunning because of the drone footage. Um, my feeling editing it with Annie, it, and I hope the audience feels that way too, is that you begin the film as if you're flying in on an airplane over Montreal and the mm -hmm. drone footage takes you over the city. So you experience the city first and then it dives down into the projections and you get to see them up close slowly. Right. And, um, and that's very, very deliberate. It's to draw you into the film, to make you feel it and see it from above before you experience it from the street. Mm -hmm. It puts it in context and it puts it in context in the city. And um, th those are storytelling techniques that I might not have used early on as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. so you know every film tells a different story and um uh this one is about slowing down and breathing a bit and not skimming the surface as Michel Lemieux says it's about enjoying what's in front of you and looking right. up and seeing the beauty of the city uh -huh. and you know the subject dictated that not not just him, but the projections and the times, right? These COVID times. Yeah. We need to meditate and think about the world that we live in. Right. And, you know, if, if in the future I was doing a, a film on, you know, a, a, a hip hop artist, it would move very differently. Mm -hmm. And the story would telling techniques would be very different. But at the end of the day, I think I'm a storyteller. Right. And all my films will always have a story that I hope will involve the audience. Mm, right. Uh, so when you're looking for a story, what is the one thing that attracts you the most? Mm. I often think about this because there are stories everywhere. I meet people every day of my life that I think, wow, that would make a great story. What you're telling me would make a great story. Right. And I mean, I used to go to Los Angeles and interview the big actors, Tom Hanks, Julia Roberts. I mean, you name them. I used to interview them. And um, uh, and they're interesting and it's it's glamour and it's all that stuff. But uh. I learned that the best stories were right in my neighborhood, in my backyard. Mm -hmm. They were the people in my own city when I was walking down the street and um, um, everybody, you have a, sto a great story, I'm sure. We all have an interesting part of our lives that there's a nugget there that is the jumping off point for a story. So I find that stories drop in my lap. Mm -hmm. You know, just when I think there's that I'm done. There's a new story around way. the corner. Yeah. And there's many more ideas than time or money to do films. And um, 
you know, it's like branches of a tree. The, the, the tree grows and there's more branches and there's more roots and you keep finding these stories. So yeah, um, I don't go out looking for them, I would say. They find me. And, um, um, you know, my very first film, Revealing Marie Saint-Pierre, mm-hmm. Marie, my subject, this amazing fashion designer and artist, said to me when she was pinning a dress she was in her studio and she was creating a dress by making it kind of like a sculpture you know she was instead of clay she was using fabric and Mm -hmm. she turned to me and she said I said what are you doing and she said I'm pinning a dress she said one pin leads you to the next pin and eventually you know where you're going And Mm -hmm. when she said that to me in front of the camera, I knew I was going to use it in my film because that's what we're all doing in life, right? Yeah. You know, it applies to what you're doing at CHRW. What I'm doing as a filmmaker after all my years in broadcasting and, and documentary filmmaking, I'm just one pin leads me to the next pin. And eventually I know where I'm going. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, sure. I mean that th- that's such a that's a really interesting journey. Um, so for our listeners, can you tell them where can we stream your film? Oh yes, that's a very good question. Well, it's on CBC Gem as of nine o'clock this morning, um, and it'll be on for at least a year, maybe longer. So <laughs> um, you can get Gem free. Uh, I think you have to sign up for it. Um, it's not very expensive if you want it without ads. I think it's $5 a month Um, with ads. It's free and you can watch it as many times as you want and please share it with your friends. Sure. Um, Definitely. (laughs) So it'll be on CBC Montreal as of tomorrow night at seven o'clock. And then, um, it'll be on the network broadcast network in January. So over the holidays, you can watch it with your family on the network, but you can easily share it from your phone or your laptop or your television screen from CBC Gem. Into the Light with Sate Mamora. All right, Janice, thank you so much for joining again. Congratulations for your film. We hope all the, we wish you all the best for this documentary. And to all my fellow listeners, don't forget to watch Into the Light. (laughs) This is me, Preeta, signing off. I thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it, Preeta. No problem. No problem.